Hello everyone and welcome back to the Capablanca saga. We are starting off uh, with a very nice game, uh, Jose Roll Capablanca versus Ossie Bernstein from the 1911 San Sebastian tournament. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, for those of you who are just joining us, uh, we've covered some of the uh, stories from Capablanca's youth, then we went to his match against Juan Corso, the national champion of Cuba, uh, then we also talked uh, a little bit about Capablanca, then we switched over to 1909 match against Frank James Marshall, uh, which was um, uh, basically uh, his ticket to this tournament, uh, even though he uh, did not officially get an invitation, because to get an invitation into the San Sebastian uh, tournament, which was uh, in those days considered to be the strongest tournament ever held, uh, I know you will hear that a lot, but uh, every next tournament is basically the strongest tournament ever held. Uh, but uh, this really was, and it featured such uh, amazing players. Uh, I did, I do have my sticky notes here, uh, like uh, Akiba Rubinstein, uh, who was uh, already a, a very young but a very strong player. Uh, a few years from now, uh, I believe two year, no, one year from now, he will challenge Lasker to a World Chess Championship match. Uh, even though the match will never happen, uh, Dr. Milan, uh, Milan Widmar, then we have Frank James Marshall, uh, who obviously not only decided to play, uh, but it was actually him who endorsed uh, Capablanca to, uh, and uh, convinced the organizer that Capablanca should play uh, for beating Marshall in such a match. Because even though Capablanca was uh, such a strong player in Europe, uh, no one really knew all that much about Jose Raul. Uh, as uh, I don't know, the British Chess Magazine only published two games uh, from the match, uh, or or maybe two, th two or three games uh, in the match against Marshall. And okay, they saw a couple of nice games, but um, you know that that's not not much to you know create an opinion of a player. Uh, then we have uh, Zygbert Tarash, Karl Schlechter. Uh, in 1910, uh, Karl Schlechter uh, challenged Emmanuel Lasker for the title, and it was uh, it, it was really a thriller. Uh, uh, first four draws, then Karl Schlechter won a game, uh, and he was leading the match. Then again, four draws followed, and uh, Schlechter only needed a draw uh, to win the World Chess Championship title from Lasker. And then uh, no one can explain this. Uh, Capablanco at the, that time that. Uh, uh, Schlechter was playing a match against Lasker. Uh, Capablanca was chief editor of his own chess magazine in, in Havana, and uh, uh, he he annotated games, uh, some very nice games, but also he annotated all of the games uh, from this match. And he said that he couldn't understand uh, how Schlechter only needed a draw, and then Schlechter started to play the most attacking game of the match, and then he lost it. Uh, Lasker won that game, the match ended in a draw, but Lasker kept his uh, World Chess Championship title. And Capablanca says that perhaps Schlechter only... Uh, he didn't like his win in Game 5, and then he didn't want to uh, win the match uh, over a fluke, as he put it. Uh, but okay, I mean, definitely a strong player. Uh, then we have Aaron Nimzovic, everyone knows Nimzovic. We have Osip, Osip Bernstein, Capablanca's opponent in this game. Uh, Rudolf Spielmann, the legendary attacker. Uh, Richard Teichmann, uh, Geza Marozzi, uh, David Janowski, uh, Amos Byrne, uh, Aldrich Duras, and uh, Paul Saladin uh, Leonhardt. And uh, Capablanca's expectation prior to this game were, uh, he said that he wouldn't mind finishing, let's say, fourth in this tournament uh, behind uh, uh, behind uh, Geza Marozzi, Akiba Rubinstein, and uh, Karl Schlechter, as uh, he, he considered them uh, very dangerous opponents. And uh, also, uh, before starting uh, the start of this tournament, uh, Leon Paredes, uh, he was the president of the Havana Chess Club, sent uh, an invitation to Lasker to play a match against uh, Capablanca in, Hu in Cuba, Havana. Uh, he said that uh, they should play, uh, you know, first to ten wins, uh, draws don't count. Uh, and uh, Lasko replied that those terms were simply unacceptable, that uh, uh, get this. He said that uh, in today's day and age, uh, where so many draws happen, that that match could last uh, half a year or even more, and especially in that climate, he could not uh, play more than a few games. Uh, so Lasko, even in those days, in 1910, uh, he was... Um, <laughs> he thought there were too many draws in the chess world. Uh, I wonder what he'd uh, think of it, uh, you know, in, in, in modern chess. Uh, but okay, uh, getting back uh, to this tournament. Uh, like we said, uh, to get invited to this tournament, the 1911 San, Seb San Sebastian tournament, uh, you had to either win uh, some very 
a strong tournament uh, where where chess masters played, or you had to win uh, I don't know a, a few second places, or or even more third places, or or even even more fourth places. Uh, and uh, you know, as far as everyone was concerned, Capablanca only won his match against Marshall. So uh, really, I think uh, it was uh, Marshall's doing that. Capablanca even got invited here, and uh, Ossie Bernstein is one of uh, <laughs> one of the. A few that really protested uh, to the chief arbiter of uh, uh, having Capablanca in this tournament. And Capablanca says that he was very happy that he was faced uh, against Bernstein in round one. There is a legend of Ossie Bernstein. I, I've, I, I even made a video on it once that he was uh, taken prisoner in, in a war. And that, uh, well, the, uh, the general that was uh, commanding the... Uh, opposite army said are you also Bernstein the the chess master he said that, that he was and then the generals asked him that if he wins a match if he wins a game against him that he would spare his life and the legend goes that Bernstein did win that game and uh, well he survived and uh, here he is uh, but uh, although I don't know if that's a true story there aren't any uh, and there isn't any proof of this I would really uh, be interested in seeing such a game if it's true uh, but okay uh, that's uh, enough for now, but we are going to talk about uh, everything a bit more. Uh, getting back to this game, so Capablanca said he was very happy that he was paired with Bernstein in round one, so he can prove himself against the man who already protested, uh, you know, uh, of his participation in this tournament. And uh, I think you will enjoy this part uh, very much. Uh, in the two years uh, after the match with Marshall in 1909, Capablanca actually did study some games uh, of the Masters. So we could say that he knew some opening theory. How much? Uh, well, it's hard to say. Uh, but okay, Capablanca has the white pieces and he opens with e4. Uh, we have e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and bishop to b5. The Ruy Lopez. Uh, knight to f6, uh, Capablanca castles, we have bishop to e7, and now knight to c3. So the, we have the Berlin defense, d6, uh, we have bishop captures on c6, b captures on c6, and now d4. Capablanca very often captured uh, the knight on c6, he gave up his light square bishop and went for this d4 line. Uh, e captures, knight captures, uh, and bishop to d7 protecting the c6 pawn. Uh, and bishop to g5. So here you have uh, Capablanca has um, uh, very nice developments, uh, very nice natural development. Black has a semi-open b file to use for his rook. Uh, and uh, black has some very strong central control. So all in all, it's a trade-off. Uh, Capablanca didn't really gain anything in the opening. It's uh, playable for both, uh, both sides. Uh, we have castles by Bernstein and now comes rook to e1. And okay, uh, h6, uh, Capablanca mentions in his book My Chess Career uh, that uh, this has all been played before, so he does know some opening theory. Uh, bishop to h4 and now knight to h7, offering a trade of bishops, and then uh, black can decide whether he wants to go f5 in the future, whether this knight will go back to f6, whether to g5, uh, or the queen will use this diagonal for herself. Uh, bishop captures, queen captures, and now queen to d3, preparing to bring the other rook into the game and also activating the queen. Uh, rook a to b8, uh, of course you want to use this very nice uh, semi-open b-file, b3 defending the b-pawn, and now comes knight to g5. Here Capablanca says that this is a new move, that this uh, move was not played in the games of the masters that he studied. Uh, mostly they use this uh, diagonal for the queen, but uh, here we have knight to g5. <coughs> Uh, and here Capablanca now has to really start thinking as uh, he hasn't encountered this move before. And it's interesting, uh, Capablanca played rook a to d1, but if you, pu if you put this position uh, into an engine, the engine will give you a couple of suggestions. Uh, the top two suggestions will be rook a to d1, which Capablanca played. The other one, uh, the lesser choice, will be f4. And uh, after the game... Uh, uh, Tarash recommended to Capablanca that perhaps f4 would have been a better move here, uh, but uh, you know the engine the engine likes both moves, so it, it's interesting that these two legends uh, you know discussed uh, the two favorite engine lines. But Capablanca mentions that okay if f4 then the knight uh, if f4 the knight retreats uh, sorry to e6, uh, which is where the knight actually wants to go. So he thought why uh, why help it? Uh, but okay, rook a d1, activating the last rook, uh, and now queen e5, preventing f4. Uh, queen to e3, now preparing f4, uh, and now comes knight to e6, getting the knight uh, out of this uh, attack, and also wanting to change uh, this very strong knight on d4. 
knight c to e2. Now defending the knight here, so if knight captures, the, the other knight comes to d4. Uh, and you always want to keep this option open for going uh, knight to f5. And here uh, Bernstein had a choice. He could simply trade everything, uh, knight captures, queen captures, queen captures, knight captures. Uh, and then c5, you kick away the knight, knight f5, and after rook f8, f3. And it would be a pretty pretty equalish position where, uh, okay, black does have a bishop, but white's knight on f5 is extremely strong. You could either kick it away by weakening your position, not yet, as the h-pawn would become weak, uh, but uh, perhaps in the future, or you could give up the bishop immediately, and then we would have a, an equal endgame. Uh, but here, uh, Bernstein wants to uh, go for something more. He plays r a queen to a5, going for the weak pawn on a2. And Capablanca says that this is asking uh, asking for too much. Uh, he goes knight to f5. And here, uh, Capablanca has a very nice uh, trick in mind. It's not, not really a trick, but an idea. Uh, if black actually captures the pawn, then queen c3. Uh, comes with the threat of capturing the queen with rook to a1, uh, but also it pressures the g7 pawn. The knight and queen are both attacking it, uh, and let's say if you try to run away with the queen, queen a3, then comes knight f4. You cannot capture the knight, of course, due to the threat of checkmate, like we already mentioned. Here you would have to go queen c5, uh, offer a trade of queens, but after queen g3, Again, you're threatening, you're threatening knight captures on e6, followed by queen captures on g7 checkmate. And after black prevents this, queen e5, you guard the g7 pawn, you would at least lose a pawn with knight captures on h6 check. Uh, king moves, and now comes knight captures, bishop captures, and then after the queens are traded off, uh, knight retreats, you would have this position where, couple, where the material is equal, but Capablanca's pawn structure is much better, and he will have a better game. Uh, so Bernstein doesn't like this. Uh, he goes knight to c5. And okay, we have knight e to d4. Again, a queen g3 now isn't really doing anything. Black can simply capture the knight after pawn captures, go knight e4. Uh, attacks the queen, and after the queen moves, you can choose uh, whether you want to play d5, whether you want to protect it with the rook, uh, whether you want to go back knight f6, but black would have a very comfortable game. Uh, so after knight c5, we have knight e to d4. Uh, threatening a lot of uh, very interesting ideas. For example, you still can't capture here because of rook to a1, and after queen moves, rook b1 now wins the queen. Uh, on the other hand, after knight ed4, if you try something like rook to b4, there is also this trick of knight captures on c6, uh, attacking both the queen and the rook. Uh, so after you capture, knight e7 check. King has to move, and now you play knight captures on c6, winning the bishop, and also uh, now you're going to grab uh, the exchange here, and the white is completely winning now. Uh, so, after this knight ed4, we have king to h7 by Bernstein, avoiding uh, any checks on e7 white might have in mind, uh, and here Capablanca plays g4. Uh, now, if this knight is captured, then even a g captures on f5 will be an idea. Uh, white can always move the queen, double rooks on the g file will be a very nice attacking formation. Uh, so, we have rook b to e8 now, uh, pressuring the spawn, uh, and now comes f3, strengthening the center. We have knight to e6, but now comes knight to e2. Capablanca avoids the trade of knights. Uh, and here, uh, black uh, has a couple of options, but here he decided to actually capture the pawn. And while this is not a mistake in itself, Capablanca says that the position becomes uh, very difficult to play for black. Uh, perhaps capturing the pawn was not the, the greatest of ideas here. But okay, if Bernstein wanted uh, to play for a draw, he, he could have done it earlier in the game. So he, he wants to beat Capablanca and prove that Capablanca is unworthy of participating in this tournament. Uh, knight e to g3. Uh, Capablanca is preparing knight to h5. Uh, sorry, there's something wrong with the arrows uh, this game, so, so sorry if I miss a few of them. Uh, he's preparing knight to h5. And here, uh, sorry, I almost said Schlechter, uh, Bernstein captures uh, even the c2 pawn. And now Capablanca says that this is just giving white too much. Of course, now that Bernstein grabbed two pawns, if he can defend, he will of course, have a winning position, uh, but that's only if he can defend. He, the Capablanca first plays, not knight h5, but first rook to c1. Kicks the queen away. Uh, we have queen to b2, and now uh, it's very important to kick the queen off of this diagonal, and this is how Capablanca does it. First, knight to h7. Uh, and okay, we have rook to h8, uh, trying to bring the rook into the defense and hide the king away via king to g8. 
uh, and now comes rook to e2. Again, attacking the queen, uh, forcing her to move from this diagonal. Bernstein still uh, keeps the queen on this diagonal. You have to keep an eye on the, on the g7 pawn. Uh, and now, of course, comes f4. And now the queen finally has to move. Uh, it's best for black to, to just give up uh, the knight here. Knight captures on f4 and then try to play this game on. Uh, but uh, here, uh, it's simply uh, it's simply not possible. Uh, here, after f4, queen to b5 was played. Uh, and now comes knight f captures on g7. And uh, this is... Uh, now a very difficult position to play for black. Uh, Capablanca said that uh, th he started this uh, idea on move 21, uh, but uh, he couldn't really uh, create, create it if, if uh, Bernstein didn't go for, uh, for a win by, by grabbing all the pawns on the queen side. Uh, but he said it was simply not possible. And here uh, Bernstein did not capture the knight. Bernstein played knight to c5, but uh, Capablanca says this is weak. Capablanca was... Uh, what Capablanca was hoping for, well, perhaps not hoping for, uh, but uh, going for, was after knight captures, knight f6 check. The king has to go to g6, as the g8 square is covered, knight captures, and now uh, Capablanca mentions that f5 would be strongest for black. Here you have to create some uh, squares for your king. After g captures on f5, king f7, rook to g2, rook joins the attack, and here it would be very difficult to repel this queen d4 or c3 uh, could the queen can also join the attack uh, it would be it would be just uh, an excellent position for white and uh, this is what capablanca was going for but after knight uh, f to g7 knight to c5 was played and here uh, capablanca will simply grab the rook and he will be of the exchange in a much better position and uh, capablanca says if uh, bernstein already didn't want to uh, accept my knight and go for that uh, variation that he should have just resigned uh, rather than playing this um, weak position uh, but okay knight captures on e8 we have bishop captures and now queen to c3 uh, capablanca threatens checkmate here we have f6 uh, not much you can do to prevent it, uh, or rook g8, uh, but then you get knight f6, and then you lose the rook as well. Uh, so uh, f6 was played, knight captures an f6 check, and now king to g6. Uh, we have knight to h5, now threatening queen g7 checkmate, so rook now has to go to g8. We have rook to g8, uh, and now f5 check. Uh, we have king to g5, if king to h7, again you have this check uh, that loses the rook, so uh, king to g5 was played. Uh, and here... Uh, you have uh, a few ways to, to go about this position. So feel free to pause the video here and try to find uh, the move uh, well, or the winning line. It's actually a mate in seven for Capablanca. Uh, so, you know, uh, pause the video and give it your, give it your all. Uh, I will give it a couple of seconds as usual. For those of you who were able to do it, congratulations, uh, you are an excellent mater in 7. And for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, uh, Capablanca played queen to e3. But if you played h4, this is also a, a forced checkmate, so congratulations to everyone who found this as well. Uh, after king captures on g4, rook g2 check, king captures on h4, and now knight g7 prepares queen g3 checkmate. Uh, so after rook captures on g7, queen captures, and now again there is uh, no defense against queen g4 checkmate. And black can just waste a couple of moves by sacrificing pieces, but it's uh, the first chance white gets it will be checkmate. Uh, but Capablanca played queen to e3 check, and then it was in this position that Ossie Bernstein resigned the game. Uh, after king h4, you would get either queen g3 check, king g5, and h4 checkmate, uh, or after... Uh, this uh, queen e3, uh, if you go something like king captures on g4, then you get a similar idea. Knight f6 check, king to h4, uh, you get knight captures on g8, now the queen is uh, free to roam the g file. And after queen captures on b3, queen f4 check, king h3, queen captures on h6 check, king g4, queen, uh, knight to f6 check, king moves to f3, and now you get rook to f2, and this will be checkmate. Uh, but uh, Bernstein didn't allow this. After queen e3, he simply resigned, and Capablanca started uh, this strongest tournament in his life, uh, the tournament that was considered to be the strongest tournament ever held, uh, with a victory against Ossie Bernstein, a chess master who uh, also considered one of the strongest in the world, who, uh, well, uh, opposed Capablanca even being there. So Capablanca was very happy, not only that he was paired to play against him, but also that he won this beautiful game, uh, which was not only... Uh, a victory for him, but also it was awarded the brilliancy prize for this tournament, so uh, even that went in his favor. 
Uh, but uh, the other strong players uh, still weren't convinced uh, that Capablanca had the right to play in this tournament, even though he won uh, this very nice game. Uh, but we are going to talk about that uh, uh, in, in some other videos uh, in this San Sebastian tournament. Uh, so yeah, I mean, we just started this tournament, so this is a video is a bit longer. The other the others will be a bit shorter, as you know, there will, there will not be so much uh, story up front. But uh, I will always try to include as much as possible. Uh, so yeah, uh, I do hope you enjoyed it and that you are enjoying the Capablanca saga so far. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Alfredo Peguero Rivera, uh, AJ Becking, uh, Ian Parr, uh, Simon Sacher, and Anthony Wisdom for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon uh, with some more interesting videos uh, from the Capablanca saga and, and uh, well, whatever we, get, we can get our hands on. Uh, thank you all, and I'll see you soon.